Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited to continue sharing with you the knowledge I've gained about web design and using WordPress. My name is David and on this channel we focus on two popular page builders which are Elementor and Bricks. So lately, I've been diving into the world of semantic HTML and creating accessible websites. In my previous video, I discussed the importance of using proper landmark regions in Elementor such as the header, the main, the footer, and there are so many other ones which you can check out. The link will be in the description below. These regions help search engines and assistive technologies to better understand your website. So in today's video, we'll explore the newish menu element in Elementor and evaluate whether it provides the necessary navigation landmark region for building accessible mega menus. To demonstrate this, I've recreated the Nike mega menu using both Elementor and the Bricks Builder. And throughout this video, we'll conduct a series of tests to determine if it passes my little accessibility audit. So, but before we jump into that, let me walk you through how I built the Mega Menu. To use the Mega Menu, make sure you have the latest version of Elementor and Elementor Pro installed, which will be at least 3.12 or newer, as that's when the menu element was introduced. So, to use Elementor's Mega Menu, you have to activate it under Elementor Settings. And features and ensure that you have the menu element active. It also has some prerequisites that you have to have the Flexbox container as well as the nested elements active. So we can do that by going over to Flexbox container, setting it to active as well as the nested elements. When you have all that done, the next thing is to create a header template using the theme builder. So you can get that by going to templates, theme builder, and then header. Under the header, you can create a new header, but I'm just going to be editing the one that I've already created. As I mentioned in my previous video, the link will be in the description, the header section should have a semantic tag of header to indicate to screen readers that it's the header of the page. And to do this, head down to the bottom left of your screen where you see a little cog icon. When you click on that, it will take you to the header settings. Now within the header settings, change the HTML tag from div to a header. I've already done that, but by default, it will be set to div. But like I explained in my last video, it's a header should have the semantic tag of header. Now that that's done, the next thing we do is to add in our elements. And typically within a header section, there's usually the site logo or a site name, the navigation links, a search bar, the add to cart widget, some login information and other things a banner as well if necessary, but it all depends on the kind of website you're building. But the two major things that are typically within any header are your site logo and your navigation links. Now to the first tip of the day. Whenever you have a link, it should always have a descriptive text. So for the site logo, it should also have a text attached to it that will explain to screen readers that this is what the link is about because screen readers cannot understand images. It is the text that is contained within an image that the screen reader understands. Now that the site logo does not have a text attached to it, we have to give it some form of text. And we can accomplish that by either using aria label or aria labeled by to explain what the logo is about. And how can we achieve this? If you click on the logo, it will take you to the site logo. And under the site logo, you see it says site URL. By default, the link will be set to site URL, but instead change it to custom URL. When you change the custom URL, you can now use the dynamic tag. I'll just do it again. Use the dynamic tag to set it to the site URL. And once it's set to that, go over to the settings, the little cog icon which shows you the link options. And there you can add in the area label and then give it a descriptive text to explain what that site logo does. The same thing we do for the icon list widget as well because these are links that link somewhere so you have to give those links area labels. It's not enough to just give it an alt tag for the image. That is for the image but for the link itself it should also have an area label so you have those two things an alt tag and an area label. Okay, now that that's complete now on to the mega menu itself. So here we have the mega menu. You can easily find the 
element by clicking on the dot matrix at the top left of your screen where the sidebar panel is and then when you click on that you take you to the search bar you can just quickly search for the menu element when you get the menu element you can drag that into your page and it will create a new mega menu element for you now within the menu element you can add in your top level items easily by just clicking on the add new item when you open each of them you can add in a title and a link and you can add in a, a css id as well if you want to target that particular link i wish you could also add css classes but unfortunately for now you can only add ids and you can target each individual item by the id now that that's done if you want to create the mega menu you can just click on the one you want and then where you see drop down content just toggle it on once you toggle it on it will create an extra uh, layer underneath that element so for this one it will create this extra container underneath it so you can now access whatever items you want to access within it you can see i've added four containers and then i just used a header element and another icon list widget so that gives it the links within the mega menu you can also add in other things like going to the drop down effect and changing it from hover to click so if you want it to only open on click or you want it to only open on hover you can set that here you can choose if you want it to have an animation so that it doesn't just abruptly open and close but it takes like a gradual process so you can do a fade in or other animations that you want you can set the menu toggle so you, what kind of um, icon you want it for the mobile menu so how do you want it to look on mobile and then you can set responsive settings as well where do you want to break either on tablet or on mobile portrait breakpoints then the next thing now is to start with our series of tests the first test we'll do is the visual test what do i mean by the visual test first you have to think about it that when someone visually sees the menu do they know that it's a menu typically in ux design the menu is usually at the top of the page so people will always want to go to the top of your page to see where the menu is and given that this element is at the top of the page then at least the first step has been ticked whereby it's easily identifiable the next step is to see if we hover over it is there any indication to show that we are hovering over an element yes if you can go under the style tab you can see that they have the ability to change for the different states the normal state the hover state and the active state so you can set the colors you can add in the border you can add in so many other things you want like change the width of the text and change other things so that passes the second test for the hover then but that's only for people who use a, a mouse you should also do a test for people who use keyboard do they have a way to identify that they've been navigating through your links when they use the tab key so we we'll test that out on the front end but before we go over to the front end let's do another test which i call this shaky hand test so imagine you have very shaky hands like someone who is paraplegic or someone who has parkinson's and it's quite difficult for him to click on particular items so is it possible to add space between two links and around an individual link that is a test we have to to take if it's not possible then that test has failed so now let's see if elementor uh, passes that test so let's click on the our menu and then go over to the style tab as you can see it has space between items and if we move that about you see it adds space between the items so that means we can add enough space between items to prevent people from clicking the wrong area now the next test is to see can we add space around the element usually that is accomplished by adding padding to the link so now let's see if you go down to the page you can see that there's padding but one thing you notice that if we never add enough padding it, yes it adds padding to the link but unfortunately you can see the padding is not added to the link itself it is added to the div around the link unfortunately the link itself is still only contained within this element once you go past that element there is no longer padding unless 
the link has a drop down then it works perfectly so that's another thing elementor has to fix because uh once the link has a drop down menu it it seems to work as expected but links that don't have any drop down content don't seem to to work as expected and they actually have links they're not just blank text they have links because you can see if we hover over it it has the it changes to the hand symbol but once you go anywhere around it the, it doesn't work but when you see anyone with the drop down it works perfectly so that's a bug in elementor they need to fix it okay now that that test is done the next test now is the test on the front end so here on the front end the first step is to see if the links have focusable states so let's click on this area and then use the tab key to go through the links as you can see there is a focusable state though it's easy for people to see that the links have been focused on so that test is complete then now we're going to do the screen reader test which is the major test we do let's open up a screen reader first i'll do the test on the nike website so we can have a feel for how it sounds so let's open up our screen reader so now we have the screen reader open for this test i'll be using the nvda screen reader there are other ones like jaws there is voiceover for mac there is narrator for windows and some other ones so now let's hear what it sounds like i'll be using the keyboard to navigate so using the tab key to navigate through all the links and when you get banner landmark nike homepage visited link it says banner landmark that is it tells you that we're in the header section and then it tells us nike home page visited link so you know that this link is the nike home page and we are on the home page and i've visited the link before so that's why it tells us visited link now when we move on to the next one it should tell us that we're in the navigation landmark and then give us some more information so let's press the tab key again navigation landmark list new and featured menu so it tells us that we're in the navigation landmark and this is a new and featured menu so once you hear it say menu that means it has a drop down within it so we can navigate to the drop down by pressing the enter key so when you press the enter menu. key it opens up the menu and then now since it's a menu you can navigate using the arrow keys so when you press the down arrow main menu new and featured featured one of 26 it tells you that this is the main menu new and featured so it's, it's trying to break it down for you that we're currently in the main menu and then you're within new and featured and then you're on the fe featured visited link and then main through, menu new and featured featured shop all new arrivals two of 26 you see and as you go down and it's, you can also go left main menu new and featured shop icons eight of 26 and right and main menu new and featured featured one of 26 and whenever you want to exit from the menu just press the escape key it goes back to the new to, and featured menu to the top level menu so that's how some menus behave others have different way they behave but when you listen to the instructions then you know what keys to press so now we'll head over to the bricks builders own version of the menu and finally we'll land on the elemental menu so this is the bricks builders menu now within the bricks builders menu we'll do the same thing again let's use the tab key to go through the links banner landmark converse link that gives you all the links converse link account list with help join sign in link so now let's go to the Nike. So it should tell us the similar thing about Nike homepage. Nike home visited link current page. So you see it's the Nike home visited link. So we know that this is the homepage visited link. Then once we press the tab key, it should tell us that we're in the navigation landmark and give us some more information about the first item on the, on the list. Menu navigation landmark list with five items, new and featured link. So now it's telling you that that's the navigation landmark, new and featured list. So it doesn't tell you that it is a menu it tells you a list so that means it's just a link the next one men link it tells you men's link that is just a link if you click on the link it, it should take you to the link but not the drop down if you click again on the tab key men's menu drop down button collapsed so it tells you is the men's menu drop down button collapsed so now we know that it's a button if you want to open it you press either the enter key or the spacebar similar to the other one 
but this one is not using the menu it's using a drop down icon expanded so now it tells you that the 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 icon has been ex expanded and then that means there's a list that you can go through for this one since it's not a menu is kind of a tab you have to go through using the tab key to go through the list so let's you press the tab key new releases link it gives it goes through all the links summer essentials link national team kits link best sellers link all shoes link and so on and so forth if you want to go back you press the escape key similar to what we had in the nike's website men's menu drop down button expanded i created three different styles the first Men, new and featured link. style is a link without a drop down. The second Men link is a link that also has a drop down. And then for the women, I decided to do without a link, but just a drop down. Men's menu drop down button collapsed. Men's menu drop down button collapsed. So it skips the, the women's title because it doesn't have a link, but then it goes straight to the drop down. And as usual, you can press the enter Expanded. key to expand it and then use the tab key to go new releases link. It. If it's a menu, then you use the arrow keys. If it's the drop down link, then you use the tab key to navigate through it. So now let's see how did Elementor implement theirs. So here we are on the Elementor's own page. So now let's do the same thing. Let's navigate using the tab key. Nike home visited link. So similar thing because we added the area label. It says the Nike home visited link. Now let's see for the navigation menu. Navigation landmark. New and featured tab selected collapsed. It says navigation landmark, new and featured tab collapsed. So that means there should be a way to expand it. But as you can see visually, there is no drop down on it. So that means it's already giving us false information. And we might be tempted to click on enter and it will take us somewhere else. When we expect, when it says collapsed, it should be able to expand it but let's ignore that and go to the next link and see what it says new and featured link current page it's, it's still on the same thing but let's go again with the tab key men link tab collapsed it says men's link tab collapsed so that means we should be able to expand it using the space bar or the enter key similar to what we did in the other two websites but when you press the enter key Blog element a test site. It opens the page Toolbar itself. navigation landmark list with seven items sub menu link about so Let's word. go back again. Element a test site. So there's no way to open the drop down, unfortunately. Kids link current page tab collapsed. And it completely ignores the women's link, which doesn't have a link, just has a drop down. It completely ignores it. So unless you are using a keyboard, which you can see here, you cannot access the drop downs, unfortunately. So those two already made it a fail for us. So in summary, these are the areas I feel Elementor should look into for their mega menu. One, they should allow us to add CSS classes to individual menu items. They should fix the padding for menu items that don't contain drop downs. They should also remove the area expanded attributes from links that do not contain a drop down. The menu list items should not be announced as tabs but rather as menu items or pop-ups or drop-downs or something else that is more appropriate. And then finally, they should allow the drop-downs to be keyboard accessible because right now they are not. Also, I noticed that the drop-down icons, you cannot change the colors of the drop-down icons. It, it cannot be styled, unfortunately. If you think it, it can and I missed something, please do let me know in the comment section below. And if this video has helped you, please drop a like drop a comment and share this video hopefully elementor will get to see the video and make the necessary changes i'll be adding some of these to the github for them to try to fix some of these problems and then please support by liking and then adding your comments to the github repository as well so thank you and i'll see you in the next one